Hello, everybody. Idre here. And for anybody new here, I make casual reviews that are just my opinions. So take everything I say with a massive grain of salt. Hope you guys are liking my more laid back one one review a week schedule. It's kind of been it's made it easier for me. It's made it more enjoyable for me. And um, videos like this, extra videos, tier ranking videos, um, kind of break that rule. But they aren't they aren't really reviews. So um, today, if you haven't already read the title, I'm going to be doing a tier list of Green Day, uh, world famous punk band, pop punk band, you name it. Uh, big in the 90s, big in the 2000s, big today, for better or worse. One of my personal favorite bands that really shaped my music taste and a lot of, you know, my musical experiences. But I do think that, well, their early work, pretty much everything up until American Idiot is relatively solid. Afterwards, it gets a bit bumpier. But I don't want to spend too much time blabbering here. I just want to get straight into it. Let me share my screen. Here we have all 13 of Green Day's studio albums, plus Shenanigans. I didn't really make this um, specific tier list. I probably wouldn't include Shenanigans if it was my personal choice. Though, I'll talk about it. But further ado, let's just get right into it. We start with 39 Smooth. This tier ranking includes the 1039 Smooth Out Slappy Hours compilation, which is all right. Uh, I can understand why many people consider that an album. I love 39 Smooth, though. One of my personal favorites, and on a good day, it might even be my favorite. I feel like, to me, it is like the perfect East Bay punk youthful album. Sure, it might not be as well polished as some of their later works. It might not even be as heavy and aggressive as an album like Insomniac. But I think that what 39 Smooth really captures is really special. And it's something that I think Green Day wouldn't be able to truly capture after like the early 90s. Because at the end of the day, they were young here. They were still teenagers. They were very youthful. They had all the energy in the world, but they also weren't angry at the world yet. And to me, all of that comes together. And plus this was the only album to feature John Kiffmeyer, who I actually think is an underrated drummer and is a good songwriter. And I was there, one of my favorite Green Day songs. Needless to say, I, from a personal standpoint, have to put 39 Smooth and its subsequent compilation right up there in the nine range. Now that seems very high. But to me, this is arguably the album I come back to the most. It's youthful energy. It's fun lyrics. Billy's sort of sporadic sort of um, solos that are reminiscent of Chuck Berry. Uh, to me, it just all comes together to make one of my favorite punk albums, especially one of my favorite East Bay punk albums. To me, they hit all the marks on this album, and um, it, it, it holds a special place in my heart. The next album, though, the follow-up, is Kerplunk from 1991. Now, Kerplunk is an interesting one. This was the first one with Trey Cool after the departure of John Kiffmeyer on the drums. And to me, it hits a lot of the same, you know, strong points that 39 Smooth has. The same useful youthfulness really does carry over, though it is a little more polished up here. I think overall, songwriting-wise, this has some of... Um, Green Day's deepest moments as well. Songs like <clears throat> Christy Road, No One Knows, are some of my favorite Green Day tracks, period. There isn't much to say because I feel like a lot of this, a lot of the same things I like about 39 Smooth bleed over. Though to me, Kerplunk is just a solid, uh, you know, subsequent album, solid second album, and really sort of was also the album that got them a bit more underground success across California and across the country. And it would be this album that would buoy them to major label success on their third album. But to me, Kerplunk, I also have to put in that nine range. To me, Lookout Records era Green Day is the most honest and true era of Green Day. It, when, I, when I picture Green Day in my head, I imagine these young, youthful, energetic, carefree, with, with, uh, with a good sense of humor, just young punks, California punks. And to me, 39 Smooth and Kerplunk are just perfect encapsulations of the East Bay punk lifestyle, what Billy and Mike and, you know, Trey and John were doing at the time. And to me, it's like a little time capsule. I love the more low quality production. To me, these are two classic albums, in my opinion. And then we get to their third LP, Dookie. 
Dookie is a masterpiece. Let me just be clear. To me, because they just because they signed on a major label here it didn't mean they were like sellouts just yet and i feel like what really kind of hammers that home is that they were still living in the same living conditions that they were during kerplunk during 39 smooth they weren't rich people making this album to me this is a true and true punk album even if it is on a major label to me it takes everything that is good about 39 about kerplunk polishes it up with even better songs, even better production, and just a powerful delivery on all parts. Musically, the drums and the bass are some of the best bass lines and drum work Billy or um, Mike Dern and Trey Cool would ever record. While they might not be the most precise in terms of a metronome, they are some of the most energetic. In many spots, Trey Cool is reminiscent of The Who's Keith Moon. And Mike Dern's solid bass grooves kind of take the place of a lot of solos here. They carry the song more than the guitar does. And in general, Billy Joe's writing on here, I think is some of his best. Songs like Basket Case, She, Coming Clean, and Pulling Teeth even, to me are always going to be anthems for generations to come. I'm going to put Dookie in that 10 range. To me, while it may have pushed the pop punk genre per se to the mainstream, and a whole slew of bad artists would cite this as an influence, unfortunately. I do think that, to me, Dookie is one of the most well-crafted albums I've ever listened to, and might just be, I think, their best album. I'm going to put it in that 10 range. I think it belongs there. It is, I think, yeah, it, it's Green Day's magnum opus. And now we get to 1995's follow-up, the really, you know, big follow-up, Insomniac. Uh, after an album like Dookie launched them into the stratosphere of, you know, popularity in the alternative and the rock and the punk world, you know, how are you going to really follow that up and still make as big of an impact? And to be fair, to Green Day's defense, I honestly don't think they did make as big of an impact. And Somniac gets a lot of praise. And to me, it is a really, really solid album. For a lot of good reasons, too, it gets a lot of praise. I'm not going to, like, deny that. It is a little heavier than uh, Dookie. The guitars are a bit crunchier, a bit dirtier, and the tracks themselves seem to even borrow some influence from hardcore punk. However, I do think as an overall listening experience, I feel like it does have a lot more songs that don't grab my attention as their first three LPs do. For that reason, I am going to put Insomniac into that seven range. I might as well say anything above a five is good, so a seven is still very positive. Now, while I still enjoy it, and I think that they would go on to, you know, and I, and I do think this album would go on to age pretty well. There is some great songs on here. Geek Stink Breath, Walking Contradiction, I think are some of their best singles for sure. But I just think as a, as a follow-up to Dookie, I just don't think it hits all the same marks that made Dookie great. However, Insomniac was still a solid follow-up. Now we move on to 1997's Nimrod. To me, this was an even better follow-up. I mean, in perspective here, Green Day, this is about two years after Insomniac, Green Day hadn't experimented too much. These first four albums, they all stay relatively close into that sort of punk scene that they kind of were, a rate, were, were risen in, you know, in the East Bay punk. It makes sense why the first four albums would be very punk-centric. But after a few years on tour, Green Day would return to... Um, a bit of a different sound, a bit of a change-up, and a, and a welcome one. To me, Nimrod is one of Green Day's most ambitious projects, if not their most ambitious, in my opinion. I think that from a musical standpoint, while these songs are not all worlds away from each other when it comes down to genres, they all have their roots in alternative rock, alternative punk, you know, tracks like Redundant are a bit more slower paced, but really solid. You know, tracks like King for a Day have that Scott influence in there. Whereas an interlude track like Last Ride In is one of my personal favorite instrumental songs from them. I think I think it's a it's a really fun, entertaining, kind of sort of surfy, kind of stonery song that you don't really get much from Green Day. And yet they executed it really, really good here. I'm going to give Nimrod an eight out of ten. It's also worth noting Nimrod also contains the mega hit Good Riddance Time of Your Life. And while that song might get a lot of criticism for being a bit corny, not being a true representation of Green Day, 
I feel like it's still a relatively solid ballad for what it's worth. And I just think the experimentation all came across very natural, not that forced, unlike some of their later albums. And it just still sounded as much of a green, it sounded like a Green Day album in the same way, you know, that all the other ones did, even if it sounded different. So that is why Nimrod is in that eight range. Then we move on to 2000s. We're in the 21st century now. And boy, the first thing start to get a little bit bumpy. Warning. Warning gets, it's sort of a running joke that warning's underrated amongst the Green Day community because at the end of the day, many people really do really like this album. And um, I admit, I've come around to this album quite a bit. Upon first listen, I feel like there was a lot of duds. And going back, I still think there is a lot of moments on this album where it just doesn't feel as solid as all the ones that came before it. However, I think the highlights on this album, you know, the song Warning, Waiting, Macy's Day Parade, you know, even a song like Church on Sunday, I, th I, th I think buoys this enough to be a seven. To me, this may have been Green Day's weakest album up to this point. But I do think that for the most part, it does what it does and it does it well. I mean, warning, you know, I don't have too much else to say here, honestly. I, I, I admit that I don't come back to this album nearly as much as some of their other projects. But I don't know. I just feel like Green Day's work on Warning, well, it is very ambitious in many spots, much like how it is on Nimrod. It does feel a bit more toned down, not as aggressive, not as in your face. And it just feels a little bit too calculated. However, when I actually sit down and look through the track list, there is a lot of highlights on this thing, and that is why it's in that seven range. And now we move on to the run real compilation of B-sides on this um, list, Shenanigans. Also, the last one before we get to, I think, the next major era with American Idiot. Um, how do I feel about Shenanigans? I admit out of everything on here, I do come back to the sh Shenanigans the least. That's to be expected. It's a compilation of B-sides, and while there are some B-sides I really like on here, like On the Wagon, I believe Ha Ha You're Dead is on here, all really solid, you know, tracks in their catalog. I'm going to have to put shenanigans in that six range. You know, it's just, it, it feels awkward to me because it's like, it feels like a move they were doing because they kind of thought their career was on the downward slope. Little did they know, American Idiot was around the corner. American Idiot from 2004. How do I feel about it? This is oftentimes, other than maybe Dookie, their most praised album, and rightfully so. I mean, this is a, this is a huge change in sound from, I think, what they were doing before. It is a concept album, a rock opera of per se, and, um, you know, well, I could pick apart the story, some plot holes here and there. I feel like as an album, it's, it is really solid, don't get me wrong. However, I don't think it's aged as well as some of Green Day's 90s material, though I'm not going to deny the brilliance of this album. The amount of highlights on this thing, the whole first half of this album to me is killer. I do think there is a few moments on this thing that have just sort of weakened on me. Extraordinary Girl, even the huge Homecoming, and even a track like Wake Me Up When September Ends, I feel like you sort of have to be in the right mindset for it. And in general, I feel like this album does have its flaws and it does sound a bit dated going back. It sounds like a product of 2004. However, I'm gonna put it in that eight range. It is still a really solid, very well-written album that does deserve praise. I'm not gonna sit here and pan it and act like it doesn't deserve any praise. I think American Idiot is still an extremely, extremely solid album. Um, but I, I just think I, my personal preference leans more towards the 90s uh, era Green Day, but you know, it is what it is. American Idiot is massively praised, and um, I think an eight is a comfortable place for it. Oh boy, and now we get to the post American Idiot era, where, to say the least, I am not as fond. 21st Century Breakdown. This is a contender for one of being one of their worst albums. I might get a lot of dislikes, I might get a lot of hate. I can't, I can't sit through this thing, really. I mean, I have, obviously, but I cannot get myself to truly go back. Listen, to me, first off, here's, here's my list of issues with 21st Century Breakdown. One, conceptually, it's not that different from American Idiot. Second, as a rock opera, it pales in comparison to American Idiot. It's much more, much more cliche than American Idiot as well. In many spots, they rely 
on overproduction, massive layers, and heck, even orchestral arrangements, piano ballads on this thing to really just shove it down your throat that you're listening to a rock opera. And to me, that just really makes this album just not that good to me. I have to give this a four or less. I genuinely dislike this album. To me, while there is the highlights, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades is one of their more bumping songs, got to admit. Heck, even 21 Guns is a bit catchy. As a project, I feel like Green Day fell flat on their face. To me, I would have really, I, I, I was hoping for something a bit more adventurous, you know, but to me, well, sure, sonically, it might be a little more different, a bit more adventurous than some of their previous albums. To me, 21st Century Breakdown is a very watered down, bland rock opera with nothing interesting going on. And then we move on to the trilogy with Uno. <sighs> Uno is the best in the trilogy. Don't get me wrong. I probably would have rate, rated it a little higher a few years ago. But, well, this is the strongest in the trilogy. I do think there is a lot of moments on this thing that um, just sound a little corny to me. The production isn't that good. There's a lot of duds, a lot of filler on here as well. Well, there are the highlights. Kill the DJ, I do admit, is a guilty pleasure. You know, Nuclear Family is a solid track as well. Even Let Yourself Go, I'm going to have to give it a five range. To me, in the grand scheme of their discography, the trilogy era in general just seems like such a forgotten era. It seems so unimportant to the development of their sound. And while, yeah, it has its highlights, nothing really makes it stick out against any of the albums ranked higher. Dose, another one from the trilogy. For a long time, I thought this was their worst album. I'm going to have to put Dose in that four or less area. To me, Dose is just Green Day's horrible, horrible attempt at making some sort of garage rock revival sounding. It's, it just sounds like a bad, half of these songs sound like bad strokes outtakes or something. I don't even know. How do you describe Dose? It's, it's pretty bad. Then you have Nightlife and Lady Cobra, just horrible songs. Some of their worst. Um, yeah, those is not, not a good album. And there's Trey. I do admit I'm a little indifferent on Trey. I don't hate the Trey album. I just feel like, much, much like Uno, there's not really too much really going on here. I think on album of the year, I give it like a 48. I'm going to give Trey in that five range. You know, once again, I mean, I don't hate this thing. I, I, I'm relatively indifferent on it. But nothing really sticks out to me about this album really at all, to be completely honest with you. Now we get to the final two, Revolution Radio. Revolution Radio got a lot of praise of my, upon its initial release, uh, at least amongst the fans of Green Day. Many were saying it was a return to form after the trilogy. But to what? What are they returning to? Dookie level? That's not true. American Idiot level? I wouldn't even go that far. To me, well, this album does contain some of Green Day's best, more newer songs. Bang Bang, I genuinely think is one of Green Day's best songs. Forever Now is a decent track as well. Even Troubled Times, I think, is a really good conceptual song about the political state of things. But there's so much filler. And there's also a handful of tracks that I actually hate and despise. Still Breathing, one of their worst tracks I've ever heard. Ordinary World, also just a painfully, painfully corny sort of acoustic ballad. I have to give it a six, though, because while it does have its highlights that really do make this album appear really good, there's also a lot of low points, and I think they sort of average each other out. And we are left with Father of All. I already reviewed this. Do I need to torture myself again with this heaping pile of garbage? This is a one out of 10 nowadays for me. Horrible. I don't know why they did it. I genuinely don't know what the motivation was. It is not good. <sighs> yeah, I don't want to ever hear that again. So a recap. Green Aid started off strong with, you know, 39 Smooth and Kerplunk in that nine range, then Dookie up here at 10, and everything sort of circulating up here until after American Idiot. And things started to get bumpy. Do I think it's likely that Green Day will put out something really good soon? I don't know. Unfortunately, I mean, they have a trend lately. And um, I don't know if they could break it. All that being said, 
I do enjoy 90s Green Day. They are a huge part of, you know, my musical taste. And uh, yeah, that is it. I don't hate them. I do think they have a lot of great music. But, you know, that is it for now. Hope you guys liked this video. I know it was not the most professional video, but what are you going to do? That is it. And goodbye.